Hey, welcome, Master. Sorry, I'm just uh, getting around to doing some posting on Twitter and such real quick, so I will engage fully with you all in just a moment. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Phil Gallagher. I run Thraven University, a legacy site exclusively for death and taxes. And that's normally the sort of thing that I'm playing on this channel. But today I wanted to do something a little bit more mm, fun. Um, I've been playing a whole lot of D&T in preparation for Grand Prix Richmond this weekend. And then yesterday when I was in a league, I... I played against, honestly, this beauty of a deck list. I played against a uh, user, I believe it is either Brael or maybe Brael, B-R-A-E-L, and they had this deck list. Uh, I've only changed a single card in it because I really liked it. So essentially, it's, it's sort of like Nick Fit. But it's also conceptually a little bit different. So it still has the Veteran Explorer Cabal Therapy engine, but one of the other big mainstays of Nickfit is Pernicious Deed into Big Dumb Stuff. But this is a little bit lower to the ground than most of the other Nickfit versions. And it's easier if I just start talking about it. This is essentially tireless tracker dot deck. This this deck wants to get lands and it wants to draw a buttload of cards with tireless tracker. Oh, perfect! Yeah, so we have the 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 deck creator in in chat here. So that's that's fantastic. So essentially, let's just think about all the things you can do with tireless tracker. Tireless tracker. Crop rotation for a land. Get a clue. Hey, if it's a fetch land, two clues. Veteran Explorer. Sack it, get two lands. Get two clues. You see where I'm going with this chat? We're gonna draw a lot of cards. Quirion Ranger. I will untap my creature, return a forest. Replay the forest, get another clue. So, Tireless Tracker is sort of the, the card that is at the center of this deck, and everything else supports that. Dark Confidant is the secondary card draw engine, although he's... this is the big boy right here. We have eight copies of them. Four Tireless Trackers and four Green Suns to go find them. Now, supplementing this plan are a number of other things that can make it more broken. So you get one exploration, and when you have exploration plus tracker and you get to like play multiple lands in a turn, it, it feels pretty disgusting. And then you have Courser of Crufix. Again, you can start playing lands off the top of your library, drawing more cards, gaining some life as you do so. If your tireless trackers die, you can either Lily Last Hope Minus to get them back, or Eternal Witness to go and get them back. Supplementing this tireless tracker plan, there's a handful of removal spells, and they're sort of assorted removal spells, so they hit a bunch of different things. So there's a Collective Brutality, two Edicts, one Abrupt Decay, one Il Golgari Charm, and there used to be one more removal spell at two mana, but I replaced it with a Titania because, well, I couldn't help myself. I really like Titania as a card, and it felt very synergistic with the rest of the plan. Now, the, the deck creator warned me, like, hey, if you do that, you know, that's one more five for Bob. And I ignored that. I, and I accept that if I ever flip Titania to Bob, that that's on me. But I really wanted to have access to this card. 
Uh, it did some really broken th things in my testing games last night. So, uh, rounding out the creature base, we have some things that you might not have seen before, chat. Vine Mare. Four mana hexproof, 5-3, that can't be blocked by black creatures. So, considering the, the metagame of, like, Strix, Angler, Death Shadow, that makes a lot of sense to me, as does the other card we see here, Chameleon Colossus, which has protection from black and is a 4-4 that you can pretty easily turn into an 8-8. Eight, eight. Or, conceptually, even a 16-16. Although, 8 mana in one turn is doable, but it's definitely pushing it. Uh, so looking at the lands, there's a handful of crop rotation targets. Essentially, you can get Bog, Caracas, for sort of various unfair matchups. You get Phyrexian Tower to sack your Veteran Explorer. That sounds like a good plan. And then you also have a Volrath Stronghold. So, they got rid of your tracker, did they? Oh no, we're getting the tracker back. Looking at the sideboard, um, I probably need to scoot this over a little bit. So let me move over these green suns, then let's drag this this way and move this column here. Uh, so, looking at the sideboard, there are a handful of cards that are specifically for combo matchups. You know, your Surgicals, your Duress, your Lost Legacies. That's for combo stuff. Most of the rest of the other stuff that's here are just sort of like supplemental removal cards for matchups like Death and Taxes, Elves, things of that nature. You can get like access to a few more sweepers. And then you have Carpet of Flowers for like your blue base matchups, especially the, the control type decks. I, I played a handful of matches with this deck in just sort of like the constructed cues because I wanted to make sure that I didn't just poop myself while playing this deck because while I was playing against it, I noticed there were a lot of really cool interactions and most of which were pretty obvious because I've played Nick Fit before, but there was definitely some of like the Veteran Explorer, like Query and Ranger, Tireless Tracker, sort of like multiple card interactions that I wanted to make sure I kind of like conceptually knew what was going on before I went and played this. <laughs> okay, Rob, that's a great point. Uh, so, I'm going to take a second to see if I have that screenshot readily available. What would I have called it? Probably would have called it surgical something. at this. Oh, no, that's Sneak Attack. Okay. I don't, I don't know where it's at. I have too many screenshots from Modo. Uh, but essentially, I was playing humans, five-color humans, and someone brought in Surgical Extraction against me for some, like, absolutely unknown reason that I just could not figure out. And my opponent lost that game. We can leave it at that. Oh, oh yes. There's there's the clip of it. Yeah, that was that was awesome. That's why I didn't have the picture. Thank you, Rob. All right, let's get into some games. All right, so constructed tournaments, league. Let's join league, and I want tireless Nick Fit. So what do you call this deck? Uh, it was suggested to me that I call it, like, Turbo Tracker. I kind of conceptualized it as, like, a tireless tracker-based Nick Fit deck. What do, what do you call it? I'm just sort of curious.
All right, what does my hand do? My hand is going to do some broken stuff, so I'm going to keep it. So I think I'm going to Cabal Therapy my opponent on turn one, and then I'll play Veteran Explorer on turn two, sack it to therapy, and we'll go from there. All right. So I think my opponent plays Tess. But I'm pretty inclined to just name Brainstorm with the first one of these, just blind. Because it will make my second Cabal Therapy next turn incredibly better. I wonder if my opponent is just going to make, like, a sad number of goblins. Just go, like, land, dark ritual, empty. My next turn is going to have a lot of decision points. Okay. So, I can go Veteran Explorer, fetch a land, crop rotation away that land, get a Phyrexian Tower, produce black, black, get two lands, go up to four mana, play another Veteran Explorer after Tireless Tracker, then use that to Cabal Therapy away their Empty the Warrens. So let me just double check that. So Veteran Explorer, that taps this. Then I get Phyrexian Tower, that makes black black. I get two lands, so I have four mana available. I use three of that mana to play Tireless Tracker. I use the one Main Ingram mana to play Veteran Explorer, which I then sacrifice to this, giving me two more lands. Yep, okay, that works.
I wonder if I'm supposed to name like Infernal Tutor or if I'm just supposed to name Empty Dwarns. Because Infernal Tutor can still be problematic. But I think I just name Empty. Them going wider than me is what's problematic, I suppose. And the Infernal Tutor is only good if they can LED. Oh man, is my opponent just going to add nauseum in response to this Cabal Therapy? This just seems good for me. I get full information of what's going on with my therapy. So, what do I name? If I name LED, my opponent will just poop a very large number of goblins. If I name Empty the Warrens, they can most certainly just kill me with tendrils. How can I push two points of damage with this deck list? I don't think I have I don't have any flyers. I don't have anything that's protection from red. So I have a Golgari charm and a toxic deluge that I can play towards if they goblins me. And if I get LED, I think they just have to goblins me. Ooh, I can also draw the Collective Brutality. Good, good call, chat. Yeah, so I think I name LED. And I think I don't play Quirion Ranger so that on their end step I can crack a clue. Oh god, I just had everything else added to the revealed zone one more time. That's really annoying. Alright. So I am keeping careful track of this because I am a Cabal Therapy deck, and it's very possible that I'm going to get another turn.
Yeah, sandstone. I'm I'm very likely dead due to the burning wish. Yeah. But there's some world where their mana count doesn't exactly work out because I take the LEDs. And I did get three of them. At this point, I'm not sure if my opponent actually doesn't have, like, a tendrils in the board, or, like, what's going on exactly. Because, like, they should have been able to do this without all the brainstorming and pondering. So just for giggles, I would have drawn a card at the end of my turn. I would have drawn a card for my turn. I would have drawn one more card for the clue that I currently have. Yeah. So if my opponent did not tendrils me, they were dead. Alright. So I probably want duress... Lost Legacy. I probably want the things that can answer goblins. Maybe not all of them, but at least some of them. And Surgical's a maybe. So I have uh, essentially like eight cards that I'm thinking about. This is not a Liliana Last Hope matchup. This is not a Diabolic Edict matchup. This is not an Abrupt Decay matchup. I don't know that I need this many answers to goblins. This is like a lot of answers to goblins. No, if I name Burning Wish, I'm just 100% dead to like the LED Infernal Tutor interaction. So I think I have to name LED and hope my opponent messes up. Like I think that's my best chance of winning. But I, th I think it is a no-win situation as a whole though. So... I definitely want to cut, like, a piece of fat or two, I think. So I'll probably cut one of the five drops. My life total doesn't really matter, so I'll probably cut Frag Tusk. How many answers am I going to, gonna, am I going to have to goblins? I'm going to have, like, infinite answers to goblins if I board like this. Which I guess is good. I guess I'll just cut, maybe I even cut multiple creatures. And maybe I should just cut one of these cards here. Could see you doing something like this. I might be overboarding on ways to kill goblins. All 
All right, Cabal Therapy, turn one, turn two, Green Sun Zenith for Explorer, Duder, and hopefully go from there. This is fine. And again, I'm going to lead on Brainstorm as my first one here. Over two on Brainstorm hits. I'm going to save my fetch lands for as long as possible because of the interaction with Tireless Tracker. No, after my opponent's mulliganed, I want to stop the things that are going to smooth out their hand and make their hand better. And I think that's Brainstorm. Like, if they turn one me after a mull to six, like, good, good on them. Alright. So, we're going to be left with Island... Rite of Flame, Dark Ritual. I don't have great pressure here, but I have an answer to Toxic Deluge in hand, and any any big threat that I go in top deck is going to really put me pretty far ahead. So I just need to dodge my opponent top decking sort of a... like, Wish or Tutor. And if they, like, top deck a Wish or a Tutor, like, they'll probably just have to make a bunch of goblins. Yeah. So this is just going to be them making a whole bunch of goblins, and then I'll Deluge, and it'll be great. Ooh, Adnos. Alright, that's less great. Um, that LED was really good. Probably dead. So my opponent gets to Rite of Flame. Yep. Chrome Mox. Oh yeah, the, the Infernal Tutor was like the best thing they could have drawn. And like, it's fine. That sort of thing happens.
So now I'm just dead, right? Play Burning Wish, go down to two mana left, crack LED, Tendrils. I think my opponent is playing in a very inefficient way. Like, I'm dead many times over. So I don't know, like, why they're still going. Like, continuing to go off in this fashion just gives them the chance to misclick. Or to fuck something up or miscount mana. Yep, opponent just uh, just doing their thing. Uh, grape shot. Okay. I mean, that's why I didn't concede. Like, if my opponent wants to do this, I have no qualms with it. But had they, like, fucked that up at any point, like, gl glorious showboating doesn't really get you anywhere. Like, when you have the wind secured, I think you're just supposed to take it. But whatever, to each their own. Uh, so, Rob, the primary reason to have access to Grape Shot is not to kill with Grape Shot. It's actually to get creatures off of the board. So, something like Grape Shot is often used after a small storm turn. You do something like... Rit... Rit, Burning Wish, Grape Shot to take off a handful of assorted bears, and then you can go off. So it's one of those things that you can do, like, for example, if a Sanctum Prelate is on four, or something like that. Uh, it's, it's something that can get rid of it. And that can do it as simply as, like, Burning Wish into Grape Shot, you know? And, you know, anything more than that just allows you to take out a couple more creatures. Uh, but... Functionally speaking, in most scenarios, like, 
tendrils and grape shot kill in the same fashion, and tendrils just does it easier. So, I'm on the draw. My hand is not a hand that does the primary thing that this deck is trying to do. So, like, this hand doesn't have the, like, super awesome combo in it. But I get to curve Cabal Therapy into Bob. That's fine. Yeah, so the Epic Storm, that is Bryant Cook. Uh, and he has a website of the same name. He is, you know, one of the best Storm pilots, if not the best Storm pilot. Uh, he does fantastic work as a content creator, and I have mad respect for him. So, I have to decide if I want to play around back to basics. I'm likely to get a whole bunch of basics this game if things start going my way. So I'd rather leave those in the deck for when this game goes very, very, very long. So I'm just going to get by you. Well, we did not hit. Apparently, had other things to name. So, I've got an answer to this mentor, which is nice. And I don't think I'm willing to sacrifice the Bob to Cabal Therapy and just, like, take the Mentor. Because, like, I can just Deluge away the Mentor currently. I'd rather, like, try to make my opponent go and answer this. That brainstorm's pretty annoying. Now I don't have full information about their hand anymore. Like, they're gonna keep this flooded strand and they're gonna play that this turn. They're probably going to keep the Snapcaster. And then it'll just kind of depend on what the rest of their hand's going to look like, whether or not they feel like they can be aggressive enough to keep the Mentor. I also have no idea what they think I'm playing at this point. Because, like, Cabal Therapy Bob Double Bayou is a little bit of a strange opener. They might think I'm some sort of, like, junk deck.
Not hitting a land's a little rough. And I think I need to just like leave my hand as is. I don't I don't think I can sacrifice the Bob to therapy currently, and none of my other cards currently do anything. So, the good news is, my hand is insane. Bad news is, this game's gonna, gonna go on for a very long time. Oh, and now my opponent's just gonna, like, portent me off of lands. That's annoying. I'm getting rid of that because I believe it's the least useful card in my hand. Like, I know it could potentially go and, like, destroy a counterbalance or something like that, but that's what this Abrupt Decay is probably for. This is going to be a miserable next couple of turns. Like, I'm not worried about dying to this monk in the immediate future or anything, but, like, all, any land that's there is just going to get pushed to the bottom. Do you know what this card is going to do? I don't think you know what this card is going to do. Opponent does not know what this card is going to do. Either that or they want lands. I believe that Snapcaster Mage is probably still going to be there, so I'm going to name that. Ooh! Hoo, hoo, hoo. Got him. Alright, uh, so I don't have anything else that I can do this turn, so I'll just pass. My opponent's got some removal. They've got a mentor. They didn't draw a blue card this turn. This Toxic Deluge is going to be gas.
How much do I damage for? If my opponent drew a blue card, then, like, Deluge just gets stopped, period. My opponent did not draw a blue card. They can currently sword the Plowshares a Monk token to put this up to a 3. Any other instant they could play would be blue. So I only need to pay for 3 because they can only cast one white spell. So let's put them to the test. And it just worked. Awesome. Now beginning next turn, I will just run value train on them. So my opponent's force of will is now active. So this Eternal Witness might be good enough to get a Force of Will. It's just value. Mm, maybe not. Maybe I'm supposed to play out a Tracker. They force that. Because they don't want me getting a clue. So I feel like this is good enough to get a Force. And now I'll play this. Opponent can only sort the plowshares. Oh no, opponent can just terminus this away. That was a mistake. Yeah, so I gave my opponent a two for one when I didn't need to. Man, I really just need more land at this point. No, that would just force the swords to plowshares. So I think I'll just pass here. Actually, I'll play this out too. It just sets me up very well for future turns if this actually lives. And it gives my opponent a Swords to Plowshares target, because I'd much rather like this get Swords to Plowshares than one of these cards. All right. Well, let's see how much damage I can do this turn.
Not that much damage. What will get forced? Thrag Tusk would probably get forced if I play it. So I could just play Thrag Tusk, get that forced, then play Tireless Tracker next turn and go like Tireless Tracker, land, exploration, crack clue, try to draw into another land. Yeah, I don't I don't think I want to play Tireless Tracker into known counter magic. Okay. So Cabal Therapy. I guess I don't know any cards. Because this is gone. But I still want to take a peek before I do anything else. No, I, I know nothing about his hand currently. So there are two swords in the graveyard. There's no counter spells in the graveyard. There's two snapcaster mages in the graveyard. I kind of like just naming actual factual counter spell. Predict an E. Ah. This is kind of unfortunate. So my opponent's going to predict away whatever their top card is and draw two cards. And it might be Terminus as that top card. I don't think I have much of a choice, though. Still think. I jam my tracker here and start trying to draw cards. If they put back, like, force and blue card, they get me. Okay. I'm gonna get cute. I'm gonna get cute. 
So I'm going to Cabal Therapy them, sacking my Dryad Arbor to name EE. That way my clues can't get dead. Okay, so they're going to have a Jace. Alright, well that was insane. Since this diabolic edict isn't doing me much good anyway, I'm see if I'm gonna see if I can get a two like a two for two right here. Ponder or force. Uh, I'll take the force. And I will play my land, though I'm not gonna crack my clue until their turn. So I'm not willing to pl play out my second threat into a potential Terminus. So I'm just going to try to keep drawing cards with Tracker. Uh, I'm not willing to play that out this turn. But next turn, that's an engine with Tireless Tracker. Assuming that makes it around the table. That's not really a safe assumption. I wonder if my opponent has a Entreat the Angels in their deck. Or I wonder if they just don't realize how low they're getting. Because it's very much getting close to the point where, like, if they keep digging at the rate they are digging and they don't have, like, another mentor to dig towards, that I will just race them.
Um, my ant opponent drew well against us in the first round, and we, or sorry, my Tess opponent drew well against us in the first round, and I lost that one. Uh, opponent is digging for something. And I guess just to like put something in play, I will play out this Quarian Ranger. Alright, so now my opponent has gone into Faith Seal mode. They have 10 cards left in their library. So that does mean they will need to answer the Quarian Ranger in order to win this race. And I can sort of play this out for free. The Dryad Arbor is essentially immune to removal. Now I have backup Dryad Arbor. Should I actually confirm that I still have backup Dryad Arbor? Yes. Ah, yes. My opponent goes deeper into their deck. Excellent. I think I'm winning by mill. I legitimately think that's happening. Oh no, is this a Dryad Arbor in my graveyard? That's so sad. Ooh, all right, so there's a mentor. Okay, so I can't really attack the Jace this turn. So I just need to pass. And it will be legitimately interesting to see if my opponent can kill me. Because every every card that they go and cast removes a card from their library while not adding a substantial amount to their clock.
my opponent left on top with Jace, so we'll just take a look and see. Oh man, I'm out of Swamps and Forests. That's just a fetch. Yeah, I think my opponent fucked up in a number of different ways this game. Uh, Master, I'm not playing the Guile out into the EE that is on board. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The opponent gets to whack me for quite a bit, but they can no longer cast any cantrips or they will lose the game. So I need to just, I think, not whiff on a draw this turn, and I'll win by mill. Uh, what does my crop rotation get me? Anything that matters? Volrath Stronghold. Am I dead or do I live? I haven't counted yet. I think I'm dead. Which is super unfortunate. I think my opponent played that game exceptionally poorly. But it didn't matter. Is Lost Legacy on Jace good enough? I almost feel like it is. Just like never having to play against that card seems awesome. So I'm just, I'm just kind of like thinking to myself for right now. So I don't really want Bajuka Bog. I don't really like crop rotation against counterspell decks. I honestly don't really like the Veteran Explorer package.
Like, it's just so dangerous against a Sarge the Plowshares deck. And so, like, similarly, I can see myself cutting Exploration. Edict's not great. Rough Decay is not great. Golgari Charm is not great. Okay, so a lot of cards are kind of bad. I'll probably leave myself with one Explorer to Green Sun Zenith for. And I guess this Duress is fine. Actually, how many of these cards do I actually not want? Like, Massacre can sweep the board of Mentors and Tokens, but if my opponent responds to it, it doesn't work. Alright, so maybe I do need to keep these. Just because, like, I have so many kind of mediocre cards. The only other thing I might possibly want is, like, a Scavenging Ooze. Just because it's something that can get big. And, like, pick away at Snapcaster targets. But I'll run this. Uh, this hand doesn't go anywhere quickly, but it's fine. I'm just going to get kind of aggressive with my creatures here. I won't probably commit any more creatures than this to the board. But I'm going to make them answer my bob here. They did. Uh, I'm going to save this green sun for another turn or two. And I'm just going to duress them. Uh, their hand's pretty good. Uh, I suppose I want to take... the Counterspell. Actually, they don't have blue-blue yet. No, I still want to take the Counterspell. Predict targeting themselves. Sure. So I'm not just getting a tracker here, because if my opponent hits land, they can just counsel's judgment away my tracker and I get no value for it, whereas this is a guaranteed play that gets me some degree of value. <laughs> hey. 
Hey, Turbo Tracker guy, welcome. I just saw your comment. I'm just going to duress again. So, double mentor, double snapcaster, click. I'm going to play this out because if they got rid of their disenchant, awesome. And if this forces them to like redraw the disenchant, also awesome. All right, so they drew a ponder for turn. Followed by a land off the ponder. So I still know everything that's going on over there. is particularly potent because my opponent has Vendillion Click that they're probably planning on using, using as Ambush Viper. Oh, no. Snapcaster Swords. Swords the Plowshares targeting Snapcaster Mage. Deal. Well, good thing they've got another one so they can do it this turn. Right, chat? That's so good for them. Ah, target the council's judgment. Sure. Vote for tireless tracker. I will also vote for tireless tracker.
Goodbye, Vine Mare. You will be missed. Nope, they let me have it. Kind of fear Terminus. So I'll play Dryad Arbor since I can bounce that, but I'm not willing to commit the Vine Mare to the board. That's kind of annoying. A green sun would have been really good. Bob's still fine. Alright, well, life's about to get really weird. Alright, so I can attack with this Vine Mare, and my opponent can trade a bunch of creatures for it. My hand's kind of crap right now. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so I'm fine with that trade. Alright, so we kind of need my opponent to whiff. Because like one cantrip just leads into death. Yeah, alright, Sword, Swords of Plowshares Bob's fine. Alright, I don't know how much, how many spells my opponent could cast. Oh, I should have bounced my Dryad Arbor, but I'm just trying to play quickly. Little dry arbor that could.
does not bode well. I should have just taken that opportunity to Cabal Therapy away the Terminus. But I guess it doesn't really matter. I can do that now. Actually, I should probably just skip that. Because... If I just keep bouncing it, I'm not going to get any draw steps for the rest of the game that actually matter. So I need to get that off the table. Alright. Kind of drew like poop that game. So, like, I could bounce the click and make my opponent replay it, but then I just like keep losing all of my draw steps to that card, and I think that's very, very bad. Those were rough. So good news for me. Unless all my good stuff gets hemmed. I guess no matter what, there's no way that I can't have, like, something next turn. Alright, so my opponent did bad lands and him there. So this is actually kind of sweet. Alright, so Pana has Snapcaster and Gurmag Angler. So now I'll cast this again. And I guess since I've got nothing on board, I should just take the Gurmag Angler. And I'll leave them with Snapcaster and Bloodstain Mire. And they can. They can snapcast or brainstorm and try to get out of this. 
and it's my top decks versus theirs, essentially. But I'm too afraid of Gurmag Angler on an empty board. Luckily for me, the Grixis control deck doesn't really kill quickly at all. So I'll have a lot of time to get out of this. Although if they play a Jace this turn, uh, that'd be pretty bad for me. I think I want to pave the way before I try anything else. And this seems like a great way to do that. I don't care about any of these cards except for Force of Will. So I should actually just leave this in play, right? Because it's either an unblockable attacker or it, like, absorbs a card. So I don't need to sacrifice... Or, now, if I sacrifice this to Cabal Therapy, I can get a Shuffle. And I kind of want that Shuffle. So since they just bolted me, I actually kind of got like a two-for-one out of this Cabal Therapy. Oh man, they had a second Lightning Bolt. Neat. So I don't really want any of this stuff, unfortunately. I don't have anything good enough in my graveyard where I want to, like, crop rotation for anything right now. Um, I mean, I guess I'll take the Veteran Explorer, because that can turn into a shuffle effect. And if my opponent just, like, uses their turn to Jace and bounce his Veteran Explorer, that's great for me. I 
Although I do think I have I have all six basics in play, so this doesn't actually ramp me anymore. But my opponent may or may not know that. Okay. Oh geez, is it click? Oh, it's K command. That's pretty bad. So I probably should have attacked Jace there, because one of my opponent's best lines is just going to be like, Jace bounce the Snapcaster after playing Gurmag Angler to K-Command and make me discard my card again. Nope, okay, they're just going the aggro plan now. Okay. I mean, if my opponent still has that bolt, this all doesn't matter. Yeah, and now I'm just dead. Womp womp. Didn't work out so well. So be it. Alright, so I'm playing against Grixis Control. Carpet seems great. Ooze seems fine. Okay, so actually maybe it's better to do this the other way. What is bad in my main deck? I don't like Edict. Aquarian Rangers seem kind of medium. The Veteran Explorers seem awesome. I don't like crop rotation against counter spell decks. Most of the rest of this stuff I like. So let's find six cards. Here's three. Pulse seems good for Jace. Duress seems good to punch a hole. I don't hate like Deluge because it goes and clears out all the like Baleful Strix and Snapcaster Mages for minimal cost to me since my life total otherwise isn't in under a lot of pressure. This seems okay. Yeah, the, the second Deluge can also hit Angler. That That is something that matters. Alright, so this hand's pretty good. So I'll lead on Duress my opponent. Off Bayou. Then turn two, I get to go ham. Actually, let me confirm some math real quick. So, turn one, veteran explorer, 
would be three, four, five, six mana on turn two. Hold on. That would be one, two, three, no, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. So I could green sun for four, and I could just get like turn two Vine Mare. No, turn two Chameleon Colossus. Is that better than not duressing? Probably. I, I guess I'm scared of a thought seize. If my opponent thought seizes me, that's kind of annoying. I don't know. This is a really high upside play if I don't get thought seized. Let's see if I regret this. Damn it. Now I can't really even afford to like sacrifice this veteran explorer. Such a beating. Oh, fuck. I should have just, like, the rest first. That was so bad. Well, we hit anyway, like a master. Now what? So I can duress, get Culligan's command, then flashback therapy and get Snapcaster Mage. So they have four snap delta. Now I attack. Now I cabal therapy, target you, sacrifice this idiot, yield to that. Get a forest, get a swamp. Name Snapcaster Mage. Leave them with Force and Delta. And pass the turn. And now I just need to top that. Something sweet. That is acceptable. That'll fix my draws from here on out. Mary's Guile doesn't, like, objectively look very powerful, but this card's insane. Wow. Okay. So. Hmm. 
Whichever one of these I take this turn is getting countered. I want my Lily Last Hope in play more than my Green Sun, I suppose. Actually, Green, green Sun for Tracker is probably better. Um, why can't I put cards back? Well, that was annoying. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I just looked at my stream data, and it is not good right now. I am in the red. No, that's on my end. I'll I'll try to fix that in between games. So a after this match, I'll pro I'll I'll disconnect, reconnect, and see what I can do. So actually, I'm not going to get a tireless tracker off this one. I'm going to get a chameleon colossus. And then I'm going to play my land, which will protect it from an edict effect. Got him. No, I think my internet is just being temperamental. As, as soon as I get to the end of this match, I'll, I'll disconnect, reconnect, and go to my other connection. Um, but if I do it in the middle of this match, I'll probably have to, like, reconnect to Magic Online, and that's not something that I want to do exactly at this moment. I don't want to, like, run down my clock in a control matchup. Uh, and yes, Sandstone Ray, Sand Sandstone X-Ray... Like, Miri's Guile very possibly could be Sylvan Library. That's a... That is a real question. Like, which one of those cards is better here? I can understand wanting more turn one plays. But given, the, like, the jumps in mana that you make, it's it's very possible that... Uh, yeah, I'm keeping the sand. The sand's great. It's very possible that that one more mana doesn't actually matter at all in the grand scheme of things. Hmm. So I'm just playing out the Veteran Explorer here so that I can sack it to tower on turn two. And then I can Cabal Therapy into Chameleon Colossus. If I get hemmed here, it's a little annoying. Uh, no, um, Briel in the chat is the one who designed this deck.
Okay, so I'm going to Cabal Therapy before taking any other action. All right, my opponent brainstorms. So they will hide some of their best goodies. But they're going to be forced to shuffle. So if they actually hide their best stuff, that works out in my favor. So I'm just going to name good cards. I think I'm going to name Force of Will with the first one. Ooh. Alright, so they have Ponder, Brainstorm, Gurmag Angler. So I can go just like four mana, flop Chameleon Colossus into play. Alternatively, I can just like sack it and play Bob. Alright, so I can Cabal Therapy flashback, in which case they'll brainstorm, put back Ponder and Angler. Or I can just sack it to Tower and play Chameleon Colossus this turn. I think I like just playing Chameleon Colossus. It beats what they currently have handily, and my Cabal Therapy doesn't line up well against what they have. So in order to play Chameleon Colossus, I do need to get Forest Forest here. The good news is that if this Chameleon Colossus gets answered somehow, next turn I just play Tracker into land, and I start going ham that way. Like I can go, I can go Tracker into land into Bob if I so desire. If this Chameleon Colossus doesn't get answered, I might just go... Like, there's a real temptation to just go, like, Misty Rainforest, crack you for eight. Two turns in a row. That was a really good hymn to Turok. Okay, do I just crack for eight? Like, I can see myself just wanting to leave this Bob around for a rainy day. But I guess if I have Miri's Guile to go and fix my draws from here on out, it doesn't matter too much. So, hypothetically, if I got a Dryad Arbor with this, I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I can't, like, double pump next turn even if I draw a land. You know, I want to play this to play around an Edict. Yeah, I, I actually do just want to play out some cards. All 
And I'm going to play this out because I'm assuming that like the Miri's Guile will draw me into gas. And with the exception of Toxic Deluge, I'm insulated from most of the stuff that my opponent can be doing. If I just play, it, like if I just hang out with Chameleon, Chameleon Colossus and my opponent plays a Jace, that race might not favor me because they go like Jace, Bounce, and him, me, or Thought sees me. Um, I'm going to press my advantage while I'm very far ahead. Do I want to fetch a Dryad Arbor? No, I don't think I do. Alright. So we'll put Bob on bottom, Mary's Guile on top. Alright, well, that's pretty insane. So on the on the board currently, the Chameleon Colossus forces my opponent to either like bounce it again, or just put us, or just like accept that the Jace is going to die. All right, so now my opponent's going to try to like snap and him and get rid of it. Fortunately for me, all of my cards here are gas. Divine Mare is still pretty good. If their last card is also a removal spell for Bob, I'm a little annoyed. Jeez. 